The Chicago Bears go into Las Vegas with a rookie quarterback and defeat the 3-1 Las Vegas Raiders by a score of 20-9 to move on to 3-2 on the season what's going on guys i'm back with the chicago bears post game reaction videos which i'll be doing every single week this year so if you guys want more post game reaction videos from me subscribe to this channel but in today's video guys i'll be breaking down the impressive win that our chicago bears had that really does change you know a lot of people's outlook on this season going forward in my opinion okay going into this game okay keep in mind this was a you know, Las Vegas crowd that was full of Raiders fans. It was going to be a rookie starting for us going on the road. And, you know, historically, rookies usually don't win many games on the road. They don't do well in their first year regardless. But especially on the road, most rookie quarterbacks don't perform well. And most teams with the rookie quarterback lose games on the road. And especially looking at how, you know, stacked the Raiders offense was with playmakers all over the field, with, you know, Darren Waller, with... Derek Carr having a pretty good year to go into that stadium and to practically dominate time of possession. Okay, the Bears won time of possession today by uh, over five minutes, which that doesn't seem like a lot. But if you saw how the game was flowing, the Bears were in complete control of the clock to get off to a 14 to 3 lead at halftime to also just, you know, hold the Raiders offense. their supposedly stacked offense that was number six in the NFL going into this game. We held that offense to only having 259 total yards and only nine points on the entire day. Do you guys understand how big that is for this Bears team? This Bears team was picked by a lot of people to not even be competitive this year at all. Okay, I saw a lot of even Bears fans picking the Bears to go like 5-13 and 13 this season or only win four games or something like that, which I guess technically still could happen, so knock on wood, but... Guys, like, I, I don't think a lot of people picked the Bears to win this game. Obviously, we were underdogs in Vegas as well. We were, like, I think uh, plus 198 or something like that. So, Vegas got this wrong. Uh, the, the casinos got this wrong. And the Chicago Bears won this game and pulled off a pretty impressive upset. So, let's talk about it, guys. How did this actually happen? And, obviously, the main reason why we won this game, as I've said, practically most of our wins this season was because of our defense, man. Sean Desai has completely revived this Bears pass rush, this Bears secondary. He's making this defense actually look pretty damn good for the first time since 2018. If you guys saw all the stunts he was employing out there, there was a lot of creative ways he got pressure on the quarterback, okay? A lot of twisting and turning, a lot of players coming in from different angles. Um, You know, obviously we had three sacks on the day. Tashawn Gibson had one. I thought Khalil Mack had two, but I guess they uh, took him down from two to one. So I guess Mack had one sack. And then Travis Gibson, the second year player, also had a sack, which by the way, guys, Travis Gibson is really starting to like kind of flash his potential, okay? Because he hasn't played that much at all on the Spears team just yet, but he's like always making big time plays whenever he's on the football field. So I think that Sean decided, you know, he might have to try to give, you know, Travis Gibson more, more snaps going forward, but that's kind of hard because Khalil Mack and Robert Quinn are already playing pretty well, but that is a good problem to have, guys. We have a embarrassment of riches on this pass rushing core, okay? Also on the defensive lineman. I mean, Josh Jacobs, for the majority of this game, he really didn't do that much, guys, and that's mainly because of our defensive line being pretty stout up front for the most part, okay? Obviously, that first drive where we allowed them to go down the field pretty fast and score that field goal, that was not a good drive by us, and we got saved by a holding penalty on the Raiders in the end zone, which really killed their... Um, It was going to be a touchdown drive, so we got a little bit lucky there, but after that, guys, are. You know, D-line was stout up front, okay? Eddie Goldman, Bilal Nichols. They only held Josh Jacobs to having 48 yards total on 15 carries for an average of 3.2 yards per carry. That's not good at all, guys. And overall, on the day, they only allowed 71 rushing yards the entire uh, afternoon, which I guess that's kind of because the Raiders were playing from behind the entire time, so they couldn't even run the football much. But our D-line was just coming in there and making big time play after big time play the only guy that really disappointed today on the d line was mario edwards because this guy twice man he had two really stupid penalties where obviously the raiders players where he used to actually be on the raiders last year okay so some of them might have been his old teammates but they were chirping at him the entire game and mario edwards could not keep his cool okay you're supposed to be smarter there and think about the team first before yourself and you know realize if you get a penalty here you could be hurting the team which he did that twice but we got lucky because we still won this game, but those could have been such, you know, terrible penalties that could have been the reason why we lost this game. So Mario Edwards, man, going forward, he has to be smarter. Otherwise, he should not see playing time, okay? Even though he's a pretty good player up front. Like, he's actually played pretty solid for us 
this season, also last season too, he has to be smarter, okay? Let your play do the talking. Don't be Javon Wims. Don't be Anthony Miller. Let your play do the talking on the field. So that's probably the only negative I have from this Bears defense because aside from Batman, even the second that he was out there, like balling out against a very good, you know, a Raiders receiving core. You guys saw my a preview video for this game, I talked about how deep this Raiders receiving core is, okay? They have Henry Ruggs, the speedster. They have, you know, Hunter Renfro. They have, uh, you know, obviously Brian Edwards too. They have Darren Waller, the big tight end too. And practically all of them did nothing today, okay? And that was kind of because they were just straight up dropping stuff. So I don't know if they were distracted by the whole scandal that's happening with Gruden off the field with, you know, the racist emails that he sent or something like that. But whatever the case was, man, they were not locked into play today. Like Brian Edwards dropped a wide open... Would have been like a big 20, 30 yard play. Um, Hunter Renfro also dropped a ball too, I think. I think Darren Waller might have had a drop too. Like a lot of these receivers, man, they had drops. And obviously we got super lucky there, but I also feel like it might have been scared to take hits from some of our DBs. Okay, some of them do hit pretty hard. Like Jalen Johnson, man, he can really pop you out there. Kendra Wilder too, he can lay the wood on you. And it seemed like they were scared to be hit by our defensive back. So pretty good game from our defensive backs. Obviously some slip ups here and there, but when they did slip up, the Raiders receivers just straight up dropped the ball. So. <laughs> We got super lucky there on defense, but really, man, it was a pretty dominant performance by the defense. Okay, DeAndre Houston Carson also got an interception too, which is a phenomenal play and coverage by him. Okay, coming over and practically stealing the ball away from, I think it was Hunter Renfro going down the field, which I think he might have dropped that, but to steal that ball away and kind of take it away like candy from a baby, man, that was pretty cool. And that also, you know, changed the momentum of this game because the Raiders could have been driving down the field, but instead it was a turnover for the Bears um, football team. And obviously we didn't take advantage of the turnover. Like we didn't take advantage of many good plays our defense gave us in this game. So the offense was still somewhat disappointing. Not really disappointing because we still, you know, won this game, but they could have been a lot better. But obviously man, defense the main reason why we won this game. Okay, to hold a pretty talented Raiders offense. So only scoring nine points in their own house that is pretty damn impressive, Sean Desai. Okay, hiring Sean Desai was probably the most important move the Bears made this entire offseason besides drafting Justin Fields because he has really changed how this Bears defense plays football. Okay, it's starting to look a lot like 2018. But talking about the Bears offense then, guys, obviously we scored 20 points, which is an upgrade over many performances we saw on the Bears offense over the past few years. So I'm not going to complain a whole lot, but it should have been a lot better in my opinion okay obviously we played a ball control style of offense after we went up 14 to 3 but i really feel like guys bill laser he gets way too conservative way too early okay you were driving down the field with ease with justin fields whenever he was throwing the football okay he was actually pretty good in this game for the most part for what he was asked to do but he just was not asked to do much in this game okay he only threw 20 balls he completed 12 of them for 111 passing yards and a touchdown but there were like so many other I feel like downs where he could have given Justin Fields a chance to throw the football down the field. Now, I'm, I'm obviously not going to complain about this because it worked. We won this game. But I'm just saying going forward, you know, being that conservative too early might bite you in the butt, okay? Because if our defense is not playing this hot, the Raiders could have came back and won this game. But we got lucky our defense was balling out the entire afternoon. But let me talk about the positives on the Bears offense. And obviously the biggest positive is the Bears rushing attack, man. I mean, this rushing attack is looking... Like, one of the best rushing attacks in all of football. You know what the crazy thing is, guys? We don't have our star running back. We don't have David Montgomery. He went down with the injury, but we are still getting beautiful results because Ryan Pace, he built probably the deepest running back rotation in all of football. Obviously, Hunt and Chubb are way more talented, the two of them, but having three running backs like Monty, you know, Khalil Herbert, Damian Williams, that's three probably starting level backs in this league and we have them all on the same team in the same running back rotation so obviously we split carries between uh damian williams and uh, Khalil herbert today and both of them were pretty fantastic for what they were asked to do now i feel like the only complaint i had about how we were using the running backs was that sometimes on third and short we should have been using Khalil Herbert because he has more power to his running game while Damian Williams is more of the elusive back, okay? The back that's going to try to make you miss, which he did a bunch of times in this game, okay? He had a, you know, I think two or three moments where he pretty much broke a DB's ankle or, or linebacker's ankle. So Damian Williams, man, looks solid in this game. If I read you guys the stats, so uh, Damian Williams had uh, 16 carries for 64 yards. So not, you know, an overly impressive number on paper. But if you look at the actual film and what he did, he looked pretty impressive for what he was asked to do. Also, uh, Khalil Herbert, the rookie, he had 18 carries. So he actually had more carries 
than Damian Williams. That's pretty interesting. But he had 18 carries for 75 rushing yards. Okay, an average of 4.2 yards per carry. And as a football team, the Bears had 143 total rushing yards, which I really feel like, guys, I mean, having a dominant rushing attack as a rookie quarterback is probably the best possible thing you could ask for in this league, okay? Because not having to throw the football 30, 40 times, okay? Having the defense is kind of play the run more than the pass. And then, you know, when you actually pass the ball, there's going to be open looks on the field. That's the easiest thing, you know, for you as a rookie quarterback. Obviously, as a rookie, you're not going to be the level of a Tom Brady or an Aaron Rodgers. So I, feel, you know, I really feel like for Justin Fields' development, having Khalil Herbert, having Damian Williams, also having Monty later on is just absolutely crucial, okay? Because it makes his job as a quarterback that much easier. And I do have to say, guys, I mean, Khalil Herbert kind of looks like a mini Monty, okay? He doesn't have the same power that Monty has. He's also probably not overall as talented as Monty was, but shit, man. I mean, he kind of looks so similar to how Monty plays, okay? His game is kind of similar. It's kind of a mix of being elusive and having the power there and the speed as well. Not the same level as Monty, but a damn good replacement, at least during his rookie year. So I think going forward, man, I mean, the Bears run game has so much potential for the rest of the season. Obviously, our offensive line was really solid in run blocking too practically all of them also jimmy graham was out there blocking too you guys saw forgot which running back had the football but jimmy graham was out there like pushing guys around and actually blocking pretty well which jimmy graham is not known as a blocking tight end so that i really appreciated him you know giving his full effort there on that play to pick up the first down bill laser also employed a lot of sets where we had you know an extra lineman sometimes so he did bring in uh, alex bars here and there on like certain downs which did work sometimes it didn't work the other times but i do appreciate the effort of having more blockers in here to make you know your quarterback's job or your running back's job a lot more easier now let's talk about justin fields okay and how he performed and i feel like overall it was a pretty solid outing out of Justin Fields for what he was asked to do. Again, Justin Fields was not asked to do much in this game, which honestly is not such a bad thing, okay, for a rookie quarterback, but he only threw the football, like I mentioned, 20 times, completed 12 of them for 111 passing yards. He had a passing touchdown too, and he passed a rating of 91.6. Overall, I feel like, man, he really made smart decisions out there, okay? He wasn't forcing anything. He was still trying to push the ball down the field, but a lot of the times the plays just were not there. So, he got a little bit close on some plays going down the field, but not, nothing really completed above, you know, 20 yards, above 15 yards. So practically all the stuff he had was, you know, dinking and dunking his way down the field. But he did make some pretty big time throws to keep the clock moving for the Chicago Bears. You guys saw near the end of this game on third and 12. Okay, at our own 27, that could have been a... I mean, if this was not a completed pass, we could have honestly lost this game because then the momentum would be on the Raiders' side, okay? But... The score was, I believe, 14-9 at that point in time. It was 3rd and 12. And Justin Fields going in between two DBs, which keep in mind, guys, there were five people there at the first down marker, okay? The Raiders really wanted to prevent this first down from happening. So they had five people all across the first down marker because they thought that Justin Fields was not going to really throw the football further than that. So they pretty much just had all their guys sitting at that first down marker. But Justin Fields found somehow found, which I thought this was not going to be a completed pass, but he somehow found Darnell Mooney in the middle of two two guys and threw the football right at the perfect time with the right amount of velocity on the ball too to pick up the big first down if that's not a big time throw man i don't know what else is to keep the chains moving with a big time throw on third and 12 you know to darnell mooney and you know with players all around him like that's kind of a tough throw to make guys and i feel like our previous quarterback could maybe not make that throw okay that might have been an interception because they might have thrown that football a little bit late but Justin Fields, man, he identified Darnell Mooney open for a split second and got the football, you know, to him for the big first down. So overall, man, I feel like it was a good day by Justin Fields. He wasn't asked to do a whole lot, so I can't give him like a great performance for this game because he just wasn't throwing the football enough. But for what he was asked to do, he was pretty damn impressive, okay? And I also have to say, man, he took a big shot in that first quarter to his ribs. It was kind of like the same play in the national championship, okay? He tried to put a spin move on that uh, linebacker, which he should not be doing anymore, okay? Don't give your body up like that if it's not like the playoffs or anything. So Justin Fields did take a lot of hits in this game. He did also go out in, in certain points in time. There was also a time where he, I think he hit his knee or something or he extended his knee um, a little bit too too far. So that was very painful for him and he went out for a bit. Andy Dalton came in. He actually picked up the first down for us, which I have to say, man, Andy Dalton is a brilliant backup quarterback if he's only our backup this year that's one of the best backups to have in the national football league so you know respect to andy for coming in here and getting that first down but i also have to give a lot of respect to justin fields man because he's clearly in pain in that first half so 
you know, overall, not the best day by our offense, but to still put up 20 points and to really dominate time possession. Okay, I'm not going to complain too much about that. But going forward, man, Bill Laser cannot take his foot off the gas that early because it might come back to bite us in a future game. And also, probably the last thing I want to talk about in this video is that Cairo Santos is a freaking godsend. Okay, this guy nails practically everything. I'm not going to talk too much about his streak because I don't want to jinx anything, but this guy is by far the best kicker we have had here in Chicago since Robbie Gold. And those kicks he nailed on the stretch, man, they were super clutch because if not for them, we could have lost this game, man. I mean, it was still a pretty close game, but, you know, uh, Cairo Santos, two 45-plus yard field goals, he absolutely nails them. Like, it was straight down the middle, not even close to missing. So just having this much faith in my kicker, it's so nice because usually I'm, like, holding my breath when a Bears kicker attempts a kick, but I'm not doing that anymore, guys, because I actually have faith in Cairo Santos so man what a win by our Chicago Bears I'll probably have some more videos out for you guys in the coming days maybe talking about some individual players or you know giving more of a reaction to the overall broader you know aspect of things because guys I really feel like this win does change things for us this season okay like I feel like we could actually potentially make the number seven seed for getting into the playoffs because you know, a lot of people didn't think we could win games like this, okay? Going on the road, you know, against a winning football team and pretty much dominating this game, guys. Like, we should we should have been winning this game by a whole lot more. The Raiders were playing horrible in this game. The Bears were doing well on defense. We should have been scoring a lot more on offense. So, really, the Bears did dominate this game for the most part. I mean, that's pretty impressive, okay, for a team that's where it's at right now, okay? We have a lot of young talent on this football team. We have a rookie quarterback. We have you know, moving parts on the offensive line. We have some holes on the defense too, but somehow we are playing winning football, okay? We have a winning record now, three and two, and obviously our next game now is gonna be against our most hated rivals, the Green Bay Packers. Aaron Rodgers versus Justin Fields, that's gonna be a fun game to watch at Soldier Field. So let me know your thoughts down below, guys, uh, about this game. I'm sure you guys are super excited, and you should be because this is a big-time win, okay? Our second big-time win, our first one, was against the Bengals, who also have a winning record. So stacking up these big-time wins, man, it's impressive for a team this young. So again, leave your comments down below. What a win for the Chicago Bears. I hope my White Sox win the game coming up now because that's the elimination game for the White Sox. So I really hope we win that too. But as always, guys, bear down.